Today we're going to sing praise, glorify, lift, and exalt the holy name of our God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and many grand, for his goodness unto his son and to his glory. And we're getting ready to sing praises. Then we're coming back to share the holy word of the Most High. And let us see him this talk of this same gospel, the true gospel of Christ.
doing in this season please don't do it without me and that's what we got to depend on the Lord for everything no matter what's going on where we at or what we doing we need the Lord to do it for us whatever don't do it without me don't leave leave me out whatever you doing in this season and we know that this is a season of blessing that we are, uh, brother, as Brother Mark always said, that we are about to enter into uh, Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we are grateful and we are thankful for all the songs that have been sung to the Father this day. We are grateful and thankful to see all the smiling faces that are here to come to share in God's word. All the ones that are veered, we bless God. We thank you for looking today, knowing that God have a blessing for you. If you continue to stay in his word. And at this time, we will bow for prayer. Father, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We're so grateful and thankful for all the things that you're doing, Father. For our laying down last night and then this morning rising us up, Father, with a word. Father, we are grateful and we are thankful. We thank you for all that you are doing in our life, all that you're going to do. Father, we just give you thanks this morning. We thank you this morning for how you blessed Ella Sims to strengthen him to give your word, Father. The same gospel that Christ teach. He said you don't have to preach and teach nothing else. Nothing no different. You don't have to add to it. You don't have to take nothing from it. The word just teach what Christ teach. The same gospel. It's strong by itself. It don't need any help. So we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in his life. Continue to screen him, continue to keep him, Father. Continue to bless him, each and every one that's here, Father. Continue to shine up on him, Father. Continue to keep him, Father. Keep, keep him in this way, Father. We ask you that can look on all of our bereaved families, Father. Continue to screen him, Father, and comfort him in these times, Father. Continue to bless, Father, and we know that you will, Father. And we ask this morning as our brother bring the word, Father, that you will speak through him as you always do. Continue to bless him. Continue to pour your word out upon him, Father. Let him be that salt that you have called him to be, Father. Let him be that light that you said for him to shine that men may see the good work, Father. And we thank you this day. We thank you for the woman that anointed our living Savior feet, Father. We just thank you and grateful for this day, for all the men and all the, the mothers, the daughter, even the little ones. Father, we are grateful and thankful for them being in this place to hear your word, Father. And at this time, we just ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, continue to keep us and watch over us. We're ready to hear your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 We pray. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven and give God a shout. Hallelujah. Truly, we bless him on this day. We're grateful and thankful for each of you all on today. Just grateful and thankful to the Almighty for allowing us to come in to be able to celebrate in this season and to receive of all of his wonderful blessing that he have given unto his sons and daughters. Uh, it's my blessed privilege to be able to come and deliver unto you what God gave to me. I started last night. We're going to pick up from where we at, where was at last night. We began to talk last night on, by question and then by statement, why don't people celebrate or keep Passover and not let them bread? And then we talk by statement, just look at the blessings in this Passover season. Saints, if you looked at those blessings, in other words, if you really read that in the Bible and you believe the thing that you read in the Bible, you, and listen, if you didn't do it for no other reason, you would do it because you know that God is pouring out the blessings in this season. And it's up to you. You have to, you have to believe that. Uh, so many things we've been teaching and teaching on it. We're seeing the miraculous blessings of God. I'm seeing them. I eat of them every week. He's doing something different for me. And truly, of all truth, I praise him for it on today. I look into the lives of the brethren, the early brethren, the brethren, uh, how God is working, our sisters, our mothers, how God is working in their lives. 
so again, if I didn't do it for no other reason, if I, if I was a newcomer, I would look into it just for that reason there to see what he will do just for me. I talked about some things, and we're going to recap on them today, things that God commanded last night that he would do in your blessing, that he would rescue you, he would deliver you, he would redeem you, he would be with you, and he would take you as his own people, and that he would be your God, and that you would never be ashamed. Saints, for that alone, it's enough to do it. How he would promote and bless me and in this season. Everything that he promised, he is doing it. We're going to kind of come back and recap on that today from what we left off last night message again. The, type of, the title was in last night message, Why Don't People Celebrate Passover on Living Bread? And just look at the blessings in this Passover season. We want to come and talk to you today by topic today, the importance of the feast of the Passover and let my people go that they may serve me. The importance of the Passover and God told Pharaoh to let my people go that they may serve me. I want to show you as we get into this, listen, God was so serious about this feast. And we're going to read it for you in a minute, but I want to show you uh, the importance of it. And letting God's people go that they may serve him. God told Pharaoh, and this is a start before he told him anything else that he was going to do. He told Moses to go down and tell Pharaoh, these people are my sons and my daughters. He talked about how he loved his sons and daughters. And he told Pharaoh, you have a son. And if you don't let my son go, my chosen, I'm going to kill your son, even your firstborn. It's just that important to him, saints. And listen, he will still at any day go to war for you. Bro, Tony, you're still an apple of his eye, whether we know these things. And some of these things, what hurt us is, is when we're not told these things, saints. This is why it's so easy to fall and it's so easy to get weak when people don't blow your mind up on who you are in Christ. Most of us really don't know. We just feel that we're just another person in the world waiting to go to heaven. But that's not it, saints. You are somebody in the earth realm to God Almighty. And if don't nobody else ever tell you that, Listen, I want to take time to show you how important you are to God. God called you something even before you made the cut of it. The, when I say the cut, the full of something. In the eyesight of God, you are just like him. You are God. And a lot of people won't tell you that. A lot of people won't tell you of your, your value, your, 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 your importance to him through the inheritance. Yes, sir, brother. They won't tell you those things. They want to keep you boggled down in mind, thinking that you can't never have, you can't never be healed, and you can't, all of the lows and downs in life. They want to keep you that just where Jonah was in life. Went down to Tasha, went down to the ship, went down in the bottom of the sea, and that's all, that's all, that's all they want to tell you. But I come to, I come to give you good news today. Elder Sim just told us in his message, who is the one that's doing all that stuff? And God going to get there. But I come to, to give you good news today. To let you know that if you prepare your mind, like I told you last night, and if you can keep it on your mouth, God can bring it into your life. There's nothing else that can stop that. And then my prayer is to teach you. I pray, I pray, I pray that, 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 that with hope of all that I've talked about over the last two months, that you might want to look into this thing called Passover. Give us a foundation of scripture, Mark Webb. First Corinthians 5 and 7. And just give me the end part of it. Being with Christ. Uh, um, I pray that you can look into this with hopes. See, there ain't nothing else to stop you now. What's today's date? The 6th. You got nine days before Passover. So ain't nothing to stop you now. Easter's gone and it's out of the way. Bless God. And it didn't do nothing for you. It didn't give you no promises of healing. It didn't give you no promises of nothing. All you did, all, all Easter gave you was a new suit. 
then give you other promises. The things that I make promises to you through by way of the spirit, the anointing, and the power of God through the word of God. Listen, the people are already eating the fruit and the manifestations of it. So I'm going to give you a new chance today as a priest of God that loves people to look into this. And when I get finished, don't be like Pharaoh. Don't, I said last night, some people do this as if to say that Passover is not good enough. They want something else. They wanted Easter. So many have did it. But listen, it didn't give you nothing. It didn't produce nothing in your life. I want to give you what Christ said today. Give it to me. 1 Corinthians 5, the last part of verse 7. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed That's for what us. I want to give you today. I showed you how important this was with him giving his life. So you last night that it was the, the blood and bulls could not make you perfect. It couldn't sanctify you. But his blood, give it to me again. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for I us. I want to show you why this is so important. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it was Christ that wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger. It was him that came down in the beginning. He said, Lo, I come, and the volume of the book is written to me to do your will. Sacrifices and burnt offering for sin, God never had any pleasure of them. But he prepared him a body, and he came and qualified for us to what we couldn't qualify for ourselves. So I want to introduce all that to you today and give you another chance. To all of you all that's already veering to Main Sherry, God bless you all. Uh, uh, Lakeisha. Uh, Sister Sarah, Sister Haltman, all of you guys, uh, Sister, uh, Israel, all of you all that's very nice. Listen, we bless God for you. We have something we want to show you today. The importance of the Feast of Passover. Let my people go that they may serve me. I want to show you how important you are to God. Now listen as we get into this lesson. Some of you all, you know it's been a little rough. You've had your trials and different things right before Passover. Listen, I want to show you that's just the work of the enemy. But God loves you so much the way he's going to tell you something. Told, told the person that's bothering you, if you don't let my children go and serve this feast, I'm going to kill your son, even your firstborn. He loves you just that much. God bless you, brother. Let's get into the son. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. We're going to do the whole scripture, our foundation of the scripture. And then we're going to go back and establish where this come in at. And, and do it. Just give me, just give me my, just, just do the whole scripture. Purge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unliving. As you what now? Are unliving. You are unliving. Living to be, unliving mean to be seeing free. How did you get seeing free? How did you get so clean in the eyesight of God, a pure in the eyesight of God? For even Christ, our Passover <laughs> is sacrificed. That's Lord. how you did it. You didn't come with your blood. You didn't come with the blood of any other animal. But even Christ, our Passover, he shed his blood, and that's what made you sin free. Let's show you back what we're talking about. Leviticus 23. I want to show you this. And like I say, you won't find that word Easter, and it was an added word. It wasn't a misprint. You won't find that but one time in the Bible. But this Passover, I can read it to you from the law all the way to the closing, last book in the Bible, where he commanded for you to celebrate these things. Or that you should. Leviticus 23 and verse number 1 and 2. The importance of the feast of Passover. Let's read it. And Leviticus the, 23, 1 to 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Now, we're going to show you which one of these feasts of the Lord. Even? Even the Lord's feast. All right. These are his feet. Come on down to verse number 4 and do it again. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. Listen, it is all for your good. Let's look at this first one, what he's talking about there, though. What we're talking about. In the 14th day <clears throat> of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Whose Passover is it? The Lord. Now, listen, when, you, when people ask you to come all the way to Chicago for the graduation, <laughs> and that ain't your daughter, it ain't your son, that's your niece. And you leave and go all the way to Chicago for the graduation because it is the graduation of the thing. Now, this is the Lord's Passover. And the good thing about it, it don't cause you nothing but to just come and sit down and eat of the blessing of God. 
It is the Lord's Passover. It belonged to him. Christ, our Passover, gave his life for you. Let's start this in Exodus chapter 3, and let's get into this part that we talked about the Passover. Let's get into this last portion of our topic here today. Exodus 3 and verse 1. Let my people go that they may serve me. I want to deal with that over these next chapters here. So if you get to Exodus, we pretty much get to stay there to the end of this. And, and I want to show you this. Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 1. Let's start it, brother. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. I don't know what he was afraid of, but read on. We'll see if we can find it. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. Listen, do, do it again. Tell, tell the people that have been going through all of those things. Last night we caught you in the deep water. And it was up to your neck. And so a lot of time we thought, we talked about it. Have God's mercy failed? Has his promise seen? Have God forgotten to be gracious? Have he forgot about me? Don't he see what I'm in? And sometimes we feel that away. I told you last night, you just been in your stuff for a few days. These people have been in bondage or captivity for years and years and years. But bless God, in this season, they're coming out. And some of you seem like it's been a long time with what you've been in. But I can rest assure you, if you stick with me with this, God will bring you out of it. Read the text again. Verse and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow. Now listen to this. Listen, God loves you so much. He's not going to send an angel to do this one for you. Read the first sentence in verse number 8. And I am... Come down. He, listen here. He going to personally do this one for himself. I saw him do it, saints. He wouldn't let the angel go down and do this one. Do certain things. He came. God the Son came down many of times. And, then, and I know you didn't know he came. But he came many of times down and worked on a situation by himself. That may have been. I don't know. But whoever did that for me up there Thursday and whoever worked the miracle for me the week before and the two weeks before that, it may have been him come down just to see about me. And see, you got to, you got to know that God loves you just that much. Sometimes he won't entrust the angels to do it. You remember, that, you remember that time when he was looking for somebody to swear by and he couldn't find nobody to hold up to him? So he said, I swear by myself, the greater... You remember that time when they was looking and they started crying and weeping in Revelation chapter 4 and 5 because nobody was found worthy to give understanding over the book. And he came down. We not behold the line of the tribe of Judah. He always showed up saints. You just didn't know that he showed up like that. You've been told that he's hiding off in heaven waiting on you. Uh, that's not altogether true. He is sitting at the right hand of the God the Father, but he can leave and make a bold here and go back any time he wants to. Just like, if the angels can do it, if they can do it, you know that he can. What verse you have to I wanted to verse show eight. you that. Verse number 8 said, what did he do, son? And I am come now to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land. Sometimes it ain't so bad he just do it himself. Read it. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites He's going to give Hobbites. you all that stuff. We read that last night in Joel chapter 2. In the first month. He was going to restore some things to you. Now listen, this ain't the first time that God told them he was going to give them the land. You know when he told them they're going to give them the land? Come here, Abraham. Come here. Know for sure that, that I'm going to give you the land of the high type, the high type, the Canaanites, the Jebusite. But just know this for sure too now. Your children are going to be afflicted and they're going to serve some people for 400 years. The promise had already been made and he just come to fulfill it. You just thank God that you and didn't last that long. Read him. Now Verse therefore, nine. now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me. Listen, and don't stop praying. I want to drill this one, this chapter here, and we're going to run through the rest of it. Don't stop praying. What come up before in Marquette? 
the cry of the children it, it, of Israel. It will rough on you. That oppression, the bondage, the hard labor. I'm going to show you all of the things that was rough on you. And it come up before God. And like I said, he came down on this one. He didn't let nobody else do it. Read him. And I, also, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. They've seen all that you've been through. Read it. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, mm -hmm. I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you. Listen, I told you, listen, God had told you this three times. You thought he didn't see what was going on. But he's seen the oppression. It seems he sees the thing that Satan brings into your life. And a lot of times we think he completely forgot about us. But he's seen it. I was glad to hear Riri said that this is as happy as she, 22, happy as she ever been in her life. This is just the start. Now, listen at this. I got it as priest of the most high God. Listen, I declared it. It don't have to end. You can stay in that state right there. You don't have to move out of that season or this season in your life. The only time it moves out, you move it. Always remember that. What verse you at? Verse 17. Okay. And I have said, I will bring up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites. He's going to bring you out and he's going to restore all of those things, like it said in Job, in the first month. Come on down to the next verse. Verse number 18 says, And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, hmm. unto the, e the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews have met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days' journey unto the wilderness. What do you want to go? What, uh, 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 Moses, where do you want to go? Into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord. Three days. God. You got feast of, I mean, the feast of foot, the foot washing, not a feast. Pass over the next night, and then the first day of unleavened bread. These things are important that you keep them. I hadn't mentioned what you celebrated last Sunday, not at all. But it's important that you keep this. Now, you tell Pharaoh, you tell them people up there on that job, you got to be off work. And if they don't let you off that work, I'm going to deal with them myself. Hallelujah. And don't you wait till the last day before the feast of these feasts to go tell them that, okay? Or God going to deal with you. Read that text again. What verse was it? That was verse 18. Read, read it again. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt. Ye shall say unto him, The Lord, God of the Hebrews, hath met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days' journey unto the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Let us go three days, that we can do, keep this feast to the eternal our God. We read that feast to you in, in Leviticus 23, verse 19 says, and I am sure that the king of Egypt would not let you go. God is smart. He know, he know your heart. He know what you're thinking already. He said, I know they ain't going to let him go, but I got a plan for this one. Read it. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of now, the Egyptians. Now listen to what God promised you from the beginning, all right? Listen to what God is promising you from the beginning. Because we close this, it's coming. And you people are going to be glad to get it. Read it. Verse number 21 again. Make mark, make mark of this. 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every I'm going to see. Well, I'm going to see if you leave out of When you leave out of Egypt, I'm going to see if you're going to leave out empty handed. I know they're going to treat you rough in the process of time. We'll read it. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that's a drawn in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold, raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters. Ye shall spoil these they, they ain't never had no gold up on them, but when they leave out of here, God said, I'm going to give you something. And I'm just saying that they God going to work some miracles in your life for you, saints. Some of you all had never had some of things in life. But God is going to do it for you. Listen to me. He told me the teaching that I could tell you that today as priest of the most high God, even to you all that's viewing us, he's going to do it for you. Come on in to chapter 4 and verse number 21. And Exodus the, chapter 4 and 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, when thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh. I want you to tell him everything I told him. Read it. Which I have put in thine hand. 
But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, Israel. Listen, listen at this now. And this Tony, write this verse down. Highlight this if it ain't highlighted in your Bible. Make sure you get it. Read it. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son. Tell her to sing them again. Israel is my son. Tell him your son. Even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to if let him go. If you don't let him go, keep this feast. Behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Israel is his son. He loved you so much. And you look at the first thing that God told Pharaoh here. If you don't let my people go keep this feast, it's just that important. He told Pharaoh, I'm going to kill your son. And I know most of you all didn't think God the son whom you call Jesus, would do that. Oh, yes, he loved me just that much. I am, along with you, the apple of his eye. And I thank God I don't have to fight battles. I don't have to do anything. He said that I am his son, and if anybody tried to hold me back from there, he didn't say nothing about Easter on this one. He's talking Passover. If anybody hold you back, I'm going to kill their son. Now, I want to talk to you about, again, the importance of this Passover. And let my people go that they may serve me. Some of you all didn't think God the Son, Christ, would say all of that. But this is him talking here. Let's look at it. What verse you at? This is verse 30, 29. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. Hmm. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel Hallelujah. and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. Listen, that's all I ask you to do. Over the next nine days, just go ahead and worship and thank God. For what he done. Hallelujah. You know, this morning it was a little rough for me getting out of that bed. And it was almost about the break of the day. And I found it. I just I was laying there, me and I there, and I fell on out. I had been laying there praying. And I fell out and just fell down on my knees right there by Isaiah, by Jeremiah. And I prayed. I wanted to give me a little bit more sleep, but it was important that I asked God for some things here. Because we're getting into some stuff here in chapter 6 to what you need to know about. Finish it, brother. Chapter 5 and verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And now, hold right there for a minute. Now, go back over there and tell him, tell him what he told him in verse number 22. Moses was a little bit scared. He didn't want to go. God got mad at him. He didn't really want to go. But this is what God told Moses to tell Pharaoh. Moses didn't tell him all of it, but God did it. Go back over there to 4 and, and 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord of Israel, Is my son, even my firstborn. Mm -hmm. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou <laughs> refuse to let him go, Behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. How, could you have did that? How many could have did what God told Moses? Hallelujah. Huh? So don't condemn Moses. I look at this and I laughed a little bit. I said, well, I see why Moses didn't do it all. Would you go up to somebody, you the preacher of the Most High God, and you really didn't want to preach that Sabbath, but God told you, you said, I, 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 I studied a little bit, send my brother. God said, no, I'm going to send you, I'm going to let him go with you. He go in there and he tell you to go in there and tell that man, if they don't let you go to Passover, I'm going to kill his son. Huh? What do you think? <laughs> Aaliyah, could you go to the people at the school or to your boss and tell them? Uh, God said, if you don't let me go, he's going to kill your son. <laughs> huh? What do you think about that, Brother Wayne? After a while, could you go up that night and tell everybody, anybody in there, I'm the priest of the Most High God, and I was just anointed the other last Sabbath day. <laughs> and if y'all don't let all the night go off, God said, he's going to kill your firstborn son. What do you think about it? I don't think, I, that, what you say? Brother Mark, you had to give me a job. <laughs> so you see how Moses fell with this. Moses didn't tell everything he said. God did it in the end, though. 
Let's read that verse again, verse number one, five and one. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord what, that I should obey? What you say, Pharaoh? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice <laughs> to let Israel go? I can't wait to answer him a little bit later on in the text. You have the audacity to say, who is the eternal, my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, of Jacob, that you should obey him? Oh, Pharaoh, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. Just get bear with me a little bit. Sometimes my message is a little bit long. But I'm going to tell you in this book, in this message here, Pharaoh. Read it, verse number. I know, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Then he <laughs> talking smart to the man of God. I bet you're going to learn, you're going to learn him. And the old folks say, you're going to learn him in a little bit. Verse 3 says, And they said, The God of the Hebrews had met with us. Now listen to, listen to the way God people, I made mention of this last night. Just to see them, look at this. People used to fear God. That if they didn't go to church, they were worried that God might let something happen to them. But in this day and time, <laughs> no more. Look at these people. They feared if they didn't keep this feast. God might let some disease or something come up on him. Paul said it in, when he was preaching in Acts. I fear because we have missed the fast. There's going to be disaster of this ship. And not only of this ship, some of us probably going to lose our lives. But an angel of God came to Paul that night and told him the ship will be lost. He said, but for your sake and only you. I'm not going to let you lose, the light, you lose your life. Read that text and we'll show you what they're talking about. Verse 3. And they said, the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go. We pray thee three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us. Lest he do what now? Fall upon us. Please let us go keep the Passover. Because if not, God might turn his anger on me because I know better. That's the why when I tell you I didn't give no thought of giving to nothing last Sunday. You know what I did last Sunday? And it'd be shame for me to tell it. But I want to say it. Because if, if you can shamefully celebrate a hellish pagan holiday like that, I can tell you what I did. I went to work and I got me a, a glass of wine. And I went out. Wine, I didn't go down to your house that day, did you? Son, I didn't come. But anyway, I went over to Marquis' house and I got me some stronger. And I enjoyed myself. That's what I did it on your holiday. <laughs> and if a person don't, and, I, and listen here, I want you to think about this. I want you to think. It's just this serious because people are dying. And if you don't believe that people are dying because of this feast, whenever you see Pharaoh, whenever you see him, ask him or any of the other Egyptians. People are literally dying because of this. And they don't have to. And they ever see him just say it wonderfully in his message a minute ago. All of the charge God is laying at the feet of the preachers. Because they are supposed to be preaching this thing. Not having an Easter fest. Not having an Easter bunny hide out, egg to hide out. Not any of that stuff. You're supposed to be tearing down paganism and not bringing it into the church. God is going to get you. And I say that so sadly, except you repent. Pharaoh had an opportunity to. They feared let God come up on them with diseases and the sword. Come on, finish it. Verse number, verse number four. four. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burden? Yeah, he, he got on them. They told him, come on, let go to church. But they got them. Why are you taking the people off to work? Read on, verse six. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick. As heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall do not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. <laughs> he got mad. He, he was talking so foolish. Have you ever been treated like that? You're trying to do good, doing good at work, trying to be nice, extremely nice, and people just reward you with evil? Tell God about it. Say, so God, this Pharaoh, these Pharaohs in here, that's all you got to do. I know it works, saints. Tell God, these Pharaohs in here are meddling with me. 
He said that they was idle because they want to take off because the feast day. See, y'all make it easy for Easter. It comes on a Sunday. You give them a good day off on Friday before then, and you let the children off on Monday so that they can rest and from the gas, all that gas they got from the eggs, and let them so that they can rest and their stomach can stop hurting. So y'all do all that. But see, the Passover, Passover, it happens Tuesday night, and they want you at work. First day of unleavened bread is Wednesday, the 24th. They want you at work. This is what Pharaoh told them. Let's see how this thing turned out for them. Tell God about it. Read it. What verse you at? Nah. Mm -hmm. Let there more work be laid upon the men that they may labor therein and mm -hmm. let them not regard vain mm -hmm. words. Come on down to verse 13. <clears throat> Let's see what the people did. Pharaoh told his servant what to do to him. Let's see what the people did. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. Hmm. And the office of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmaster had set over them, were beaten. They beat them? And demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your tasks in making brick both yesterday and today as Treat, heretofore? Treated them out. Some of you all work like that now on your job. Read on. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou dust with thy servants? Hmm. There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they say to us, Make brick, and behold, our servants are beaten. But the fault is in thine own people. What did he tell them? The fault Pharaoh is in thine own people. The fault people. is in your own people. If more than them want to come down here, tell them I let you all go to church. Read it, verse 17. But he said, ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore ye say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given. Get out of here and go to work. That's all Pharaoh told him. Verse number 20. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way. They, 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 they went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh and then sooner they met Moses and Aaron. I bet them folks lit in on who we. You know how your people are. Read it. And they said unto them, the Lord look upon you and judge because ye have made our Savior. You see what to they told him? I pray God Moses, I hope that God gets you in Aaron. We was doing good. <laughs> you done come down and told Master something, and he's making up work. I pray God gets you back. <laughs> Moses said, hold on for a minute. Hold on now. This is all God. I didn't even want to come down and deal with y'all like that. I told God to get somebody else. Hold on, hold on, don't, don't, don't come to me like that. Because I can tell you, I know they didn't come straight. They was mad. Somebody had been working. You know how they are. You know how they are. Somebody get, let me, let me show you. You know, when you get out of work, you don't work all day, you're tired. As soon as somebody pull out in front of you, just a little bit. You, you know what I'm talking about? Now the real Jennifer <laughs> cuss them all the way to the house. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. I'm on the phone. You hollering in my I'm the only so I'm being I'm being punished. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear all that cussing. I'm holy too. I don't want to do that. I'm trying to prepare my message to teach you, and then somebody pull out and you doing all that cussing. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Let's read, brother. <laughs> And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge, because ye have made our Savior to be abhorred hmm. in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. Now let's look what Moses did. Read on. To put a sword in their hand to slay us. And <laughs> Moses returned unto the Lord. Moses went back to God and God, this ain't right. You promised that you were going to deliver these people out. And had me to go down there. Read it. And said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he had done evil to this people. And some Neither of you, hast thou delivered. Some of them, you all are just like that. But listen, you can rest assured, he's going to get you out of it. He's going to bless you. Ella Seamth, he's going to get you out of it. Brother Charles, he's going to get you out of it. Ella Duncan, he's going to get you out of it. He's going to bring you out of it. Brother Hefner, he's going to help you. He can't leave us where we're at. We are the apple of his eye, Tony. He loves you. And when he said that he would kill other people for you, he meant that. And I'm going to show you a little bit later. Come on in chapter 6 and verse number 1. Listen, if you don't have these highlighted from last night, let, listen, please get these. I'm going to go over three things here. Four, four different promises. I want you to get them. Read it, verse 6, six and 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what the Lord, what I will do to Pharaoh. <laughs> God said, you're going to get ready to see. You're going to see, buddy. You're going to see. Read it. 
For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, hmm. I am the Lord. Do it again. I am the Lord. I am God Almighty. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Read it. But by my name, Do it Jehovah. Again. But by my but name. By my name. Jehovah. And even, even unto this day, saints. I go along with some of the titles and different things now, but by his name. A lot of people don't know him that way. A lot of them don't know him that way. And I can tell where you start your prayer, though. Oh, God, dear God, this and No, 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 no. He's much more than just God to me. Ever since and before I left my mother and father's house, he's been arbor to me. He's been father to me. So I don't start my prayer with dear God. I don't do that. I don't do it. He's more than just dear God to me. He's always Abba of my father. And I always come before him in the name of Emmanuel. And we got to leave. We got to leave from that point to where he just dear God. You ought to be done graduated from that one. He ought to have been at this time become Abba to you, a heavenly father. My provider, my protector, my head, my all. My sustainer, my keeper. He, he ought to have been a, come that point to you at this point. Read the text. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant what with them. What did you give them, Father? My covenant. To give them the land of the Canaan, the land of their pri <laughs> he privilege. He keeps promising you this. And I'm going to walk in it one day. The old song said, I want to walk in Jerusalem. Just like John, I want to walk in one day. I'm going to read it. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. That's why he's going to do it. Now let me show you this thing. Get this. Make sure you got number six uh, uh, underlined and highlighted. This is the first, what do the first problem? Let's look at it. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring ye out. What's the promise he gave you? I will bring you. Underline that and highlight. This is the first promise that he gave you. I'm going to bring you out of all of that stuff you've been in. God, we've been in for 437 years. It don't make no difference. This day, I'm going to bring you out. Read it. That's the first one. And I will rid you out of their abundance. The next thing, I'm going to rescue you. I will bring you out. And the I next will, one, I will rescue you. Look at the next one. And I will redeem you. The, the next one is I will redeem you. Three promises right there in this season that he promised. whole lot more than that, but you got to get these. I will bring you out. I will rescue you. I will redeem you. Let's look at the next one. Read on in the chapter, verse 7. And I will take you to me for a people, mm -hmm. and I will be to you a God. God said, I'm going to take you as my very own, and I'm going to be your God. And when I get finished, Marquette, Ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out of from the He's the one that the bring you out of all of that stuff you in. And I know it's been hard. These people have been in there for 437 years. But he brought them out in this season. This is the key thing. This is why we did all that teaching on time and season. He's going to bring you out. I don't want you to focus no more. Again, I want your mind focused on delivering and your mouth only saying what he's going to do. He's going to deliver me. He's going to rescue me. He's going to bring me out. And he's going to be my God. And no more will I be made ashamed. Read it. Read it. And I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to give them to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for an inheritance. For I am the Lord. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel. But they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit. Listen, there, don't you be bondage. that way. Just because you went through all this little stuff here lately. Don't get mad at God. And say he wasn't with you. He wasn't there. Trust, trust, trust me this one time. I, well, trust God this time. Don't trust me. Believe in the words that I'm speaking from the word of God through the spirit of God. Trust God to bring you. He's going to bring you out. If I be priest of the most high God and I know who I am, I don't have to prove that. God works to prove who I am. Let him do it. Ella see him taught a message today because he believed in the words of a young elder brother on that morning. When he spoke and told him that you can, 
Because he had called me the day before and early that morning and said that he didn't think he was going to be able to. But at the words of someone else, and that's all I ask you to do today. Trust God in this matter that he would do those things for you. Come on down. What verse you at? Verse 10. Verse 10 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. They How, our people, the Bible study group, they wouldn't even listen, God. How am I going to go out and tell somebody else something? Read it. How then shall Pharaoh hear me? <laughs> Who I am of uncircumcised lips? Don't worry about, don't worry about your lips, Moses. You stand on the word of God, preach the word of God. Chapter 7 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. You see that, Brother Wayne? Azariah, you see that? God, Azariah, read them, you can attract people there. Wayne, read them why people respect you, you can attract people. Get this. God has made you as God in the eyesight of all these people. That's why they look up to you. Read the text again. See, And, and that, that's where you're supposed to be. It don't make no difference. God takes two of a family and one of a city. And people will look up to you. And they're going to respect you. Make no difference about you being younger. Look what he did to him. Read that in the text again. See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. And Aaron was three years older than him. Read it. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee. And Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Read it. Come on. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, hmm. that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine army. God said, I'm going to bring my army. And my people, the children of Israel, hmm. out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. He's going to do it. Saints. I know how this story is going to end. First five. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. Read on into verse 7. Let's get these guys age when they started there. And that's why you can't let age stop you on nothing. Let's get these guys age when they started this. And Moses was 80, what, four score years old? And Moses 80? was 80 years old, just said that away. And Aaron was 83 years old. Aaron was 83. So you can't let that stop you. Read it. When they spake unto Pharaoh. Verse 14 says. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Mm -hmm. And get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water. And thou shalt stand by the river's brick. Against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent. Shalt thou take in thine hand. And thou shalt say unto him. The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee. Saying, let my people go. That they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Hmm. God verse, has told him several times. Verse 25. 25. He told him several times to let the people go to keep this feast of Passover. That's why we call it the importance of the people of Passover. Feast of Passover. Let my people go that they may serve me. Verse 25 in chapter 7, verse 25. And seven days were fulfilled. After that, the Lord has smitten the river. So God is starting to. Do a few little things. Now, I want you to look at this. These first four plagues that God is going to plague Egypt with, Israel was in the midst of this. He was in the midst. They was in the midst of it. Come on in chapter 8 and verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus said the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. How I many? Pharaoh had to be, he had to be just pretty ignorant, didn't he? I know God had told him this about 12 times in, 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 in these five chapters that we dealt with. He's still with that little thing. Who is the Lord? Well, God finna show you who he is. Read it. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. <laughs> Come on, read it. That's one of the first verse plagues. Six. Verse 6 says, And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. All right. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs up upon oh, the land Oh, we can do that, the Pharaoh said. Read on, son. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may I take thought you, away I, I frogs I thought you didn't know him. What you want me to pray to him for you for? I thought you didn't know him. <laughs> Please pray for me that he may take the frogs. Let your magician take Let your witch doctors take them away. They've been doing everything else. Read it. And... Then Pharaoh called for Moses and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. No, he's telling the story. Come on down to verse 16. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lights throughout all the land of Egypt. How much of Egypt, Mark Quick, got all. it? All of Egypt got the fault. All of them got the what you call. Keep in mind, the children of Israel are in Egypt. Read on. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice and man and in beasts. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. All the land of Egypt. The children of Israel are down there, Mark. Verse 19 said. Then the magi magician said unto Pharaoh. L listen to what the other people that didn't go to church, they told, they told the president. Look at what they told him. This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hard. And he hearkened not unto them as the Lord has said. <laughs> Even them old wicked Egyptians. That didn't believe in God, they knew after they couldn't do nothing with it, this ain't nothing but the hand of the God of the Hebrews. Man, stop fighting against them. You know, when he told Saul, it's hard for you to kick against the prick, just stop. Come on, read it, verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus said the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve Here me. Here it is again, Abigail. Let my people go, that they may serve me. Keep this feast unto me. Verse 21. Else if thou would not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee. Now we got the first four plagues out of the way. God said, I'm going to send a swarm of flies among you. And upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses and the houses of Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground where on Everywhere. They are. Now hold on for a minute because I'm going to make a difference here with Pharaoh. I've been letting my children in on some of that little stuff. It didn't hurt them. But let me make a difference here. Verse number 22 says, And I was severe. Severe in that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall God be said, there. in Goshen in Egypt, where my people are, like Ben County and in, 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 uh, Lamar, then Ben County. But because Brother Mark is here, I'm not going to let nothing happen. But the rest of the county, you all get ready. Why you better pray for down there where you at? <laughs> huh? Listen, you all handle your account. I get up every day and I plead, I plead, I plead. I cover this area that I'm in. And because Wayne sleeps so late, he don't get up in the fourth watch, I pray for the Ralston community where I come out of. And I always try to, oh, mama, you know that boy don't be up? I'm not talking about to go to the bathroom. I get him to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I always want to take up for Wayne in his room. <laughs> Read that text again. <laughs> and I was severe in that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. Ain't Today. nothing going to happen in Goshen, but it's going to be all over the rest of Egypt. He's making a difference between you all right now and other people. See, God love you. God love you so much to where he make a difference between you and other people. I thought God wasn't partiality. He's not partiality. Now, any of you all with children... You tell me you don't make a difference in your children and the rest of them. If not, go out there and buy the rest of the children in the school the same little shoes you bought your one. <laughs> I know you make a difference. Now, I can't afford it. You're making a difference. You can do it if you want to. Verse number 22 again. And I was severe in that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. Not at all. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Yeah. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. There it is again. Do it again. And I will put a division between my people well, and thy people. When people tell you that, God do make a difference between me and you. I'm in covenant with God. He got to. That's where you got to know him, saints. That's why I got to read new, new, this. Passover is the renewing of a blood covenant. I'm going to talk about it next Sabbath. Passover is the renewing of a blood covenant that keeps you protected for one full year. That's why you got to be it. And then when he looked down and see the blood, when the angel come and they see the blood covenant at your house. Say, this is important. The mezuzah that we went three, four, four Sabbaths ago, three, four, put them on the house. When the angels come through, when they see that covenant. Say, you got to have these things. And to some, it don't make no difference. How many that come up in the, in the thing with Sister Brown there and you went to people's house and they had, all of them had gate and they had a rabbit foot up there? How many saw that? <laughs> Was that only in your family, Sister Brown? 
Mama said, oh, it was in all of them, wasn't it? Mama said, just about everybody had a rabbit foot back then. And I saw it. Horseshoes. That was another. Thank you, Mama. The horseshoe. Now, I don't remember. What, what was the horseshoe for? It was for luck, too? Well, why they, why they didn't use the new one? They went to the horse, wore that and now, and they used one of the old ones. <laughs> couldn't afford it. That's the reason why. <laughs> Putting that mess up there above their door and then couldn't afford a horseshoe. <laughs> uh, we doing this for good luck. Yeah, okay. It'll have kept you right there in bondage all them years. What verse you at, Mark? Yeah, verse 23 again. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. You're going to see this tomorrow. 25. And Pharaoh no. called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do. For we no, go shall... back and do that again. Moses, go do that again again. Do that and verse Pharaoh, again. this is 25. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And where my question? In the land. You can go and you can go to have church, but you got to stay right here in this hell hole. I don't want you to leave out of Egypt. No, Pharaoh said. Go, go ahead and tell them, Moses. Listen, I'm not going to church down there because y'all, y'all, y'all be celebrating anything. I'm not going over there. This is what Pharaoh told him. I mean, Moses told Pharaoh. And Moses said, "It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God." I'm not doing that, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going over there. I'm not. I'm not doing that. You must be crazy. Yo, get me in trouble. Get me cut off. Read it. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And would they not stone us? <laughs> let, let me show you. Let me show you what we're going to do then. Verse 27. We will go three days' journey. <laughs> Moses done got a little bold now. He's talking back to Pharaoh. No, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go three days' journey just like I told you we were going to go. Into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go. That ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away and treat for me. <laughs> and do what, Pharaoh? What you say, Pharaoh? And treat for me. P -p please, please pray for me. I thought you didn't know him. See, this is the way this is, saints. That's chapter 9 and verse number 1. Chapter 9 and 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of Hebrews, Let my people go. How many times do this phrase have to be? Since chapter 3, we've been hearing it several times, at least two or three times per chapter. Let my people go that they may serve me. Saints, this is one of the greatest seasons of deliverance over whatever you're in. And this is why I beg and been begging of everybody I see to just pray, pray, pray. Verse 1 said again. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord, God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, <laughs> which is in the field, you upon the have, horses. You ain't going to have nothing to eat. Read on. Upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous murmuring. Listen to what God said. He's going to make it mad. Read on. Verse 4. Watch what he said. And the Lord shall suffer between the cattle of Israel. God said, I'm going to make a difference between the cattle of Israel, though. And the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the what, children you, of what Israel. What you say, Father? And there shall nothing die of all that is the How children of Israel. How many believe that, LLC? Hallelujah. Read it. Verse 5. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. <laughs> and the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. But the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Not a one, saints. This is why this blood covenant is so important. It ain't just about coming and drinking some wine on Passover, get you them four cups and that Elijah cup and all them other cups. It ain't just about that. They're good. <laughs> well, you said, Sister Brown? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> but it's this about this blood covenant. What verse you at? Seven. Seven says? And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. <laughs> he said, let me check this thing out. When he got over there, not a one of them was dead. But all of it, he had looked around, everywhere they looked around the rest of Egypt. Read it. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. Verse 13, that's all right, Pharaoh. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Listen, Pharaoh. Listen, Wayne, you see when God keep telling Moses to get up? At early in the morning, replies refers to the fourth watch. 
Get up early in the morning and say unto him, mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. He is again. All the way in the chapter 9, God is still telling that this is the second time in chapter 9. Read it. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. How, how many are you going to send, Father? All oh, my Lord plagues. Lord have mercy. And if to say what he had enough wasn't enough. Read on. And upon thy servants and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. Lord, For must. now I will stretch out my hand, that I might smite thee and thy people with pestilence. With and diseases? And thou shalt be cut from off the earth. So you know when we cut read that in Exodus earth. 25 and in Deuteronomy 7, I would put none of the diseases of Egypt on you. Hallelujah. God created all of this stuff for the Egyptian. But because we didn't eat right and do right, he put it up on us. Read it, brother. And in very deed for this cause, I have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Hallelujah. As yet exaltest thou self against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time will I cause it to rain a very grievous <laughs> hell, such as had not been in Egypt oh. since the foundation thereof, <laughs> even until Ooh, now. That gonna be real. That hell ain't gonna be golf ball side. That hell gonna be probably baseball or basketball size or whatever it is, it's going to get some attention, I tell you that. It's going to come down so hard, it's going hit to that, hit that cow in the head and going to kill the rest of the one that didn't die from the diseases. <laughs> <laughs> and the people, listen here, it's just, I want you to see the importance of the Passover and so that you can, God said, let them go so that you can serve him. All of this stuff from chapter 3 all the way through, and listen, that was so important, Moses almost lost his life. Going up. His wife had to step in and intercede for him. We didn't read that part. God was finna kill Moses on the way to deliver him out. You know why? Because the male that keep the Passover was supposed to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Moses knew he was supposed to circumcise them boys. You all read that back there in that chapter when you're in your own time. Where you at, Mark? Where? Verse 26. Verse 26 says, Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hell. No and, hell. And no Pharaoh... Hell. None in Goshen. Read him. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Hey, hold on, hold on, Pharaoh. You finally come to your senses. What did you say? I didn't hear you. Let me record it. What you said, Pharaoh? I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and I and my people are wicked. <laughs> yes, yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you saints. Hallelujah. And entreat the Lord, for it is enough. It's enough. <laughs> yes, it is. Finally come to his senses. That there be no more mighty thunderings in hell, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. Verse 29. 29. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hell, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord. Read on a little bit. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. <laughs> Listen, Pharaoh told him, I'm going to go, on, I mean, Moses told Pharaoh, I'm going to go and pray for him, but I know you're telling the story. You ain't going to fear God. I done watched you all of these other times. You ain't going to tell. I know you ain't going to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and pray for you. Read on. Just read on a little bit. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear and the flax was boiled. Ba mm -hmm. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. In other words, that hell knocked a lot of them out. Come on down to verse number 34. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart. He and his servants in the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Now Moses. God done pleaded with this man all this time. Now we're getting ready to close this. But what is it going to take? And you still, go get me Revelation 18. Well, he told her to come out of that woman. And you still, you still, you still want to do, do that. Now listen, we're going to throw this one in there for you. Stay there at Revelation, Exodus chapter. We're going in there chapter 11 and we close them with 12. What is it, brother? Revelation chapter 18. Revelation 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered Come her Come out of her. Leave Pharaoh and them alone. Let them do what they do. You prepare to serve, keep Passover.
to the eternal our God. Chapter 11, Exodus chapter 11 and verse number 1, brother. Chapter 11. 11 and 1. We finished 10, didn't we? Oh. We ain't get into 10 yet? No, oh, sir. Huh? Okay, well, chapter 10 and verse 1. 10 and 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him, mm -hmm. and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, and of thy son, son, what things I have wrought in Wayne, Egypt. Well, I said, when you finish, you tell uh, me, and tell baby Jay, and tell all the rest of your grandchildren everything I did. Don't, don't, don't forget to tell your children what I did to them. Read it. And my signs, which... I have done among them that ye may know how that I am the Lord. And Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long would thou refuse to humble thyself before me? <laughs> Let my people go that they may serve me. Oh, man. I, 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 I would have said something. I would have told man, are you stupid? Read on. <laughs> Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into thy coast. Locusts on your land. Come on down to verse 7. And, and Pharaoh's <laughs> servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? <laughs> Pharaoh's servant, at least they got a little sin. They ain't got much, but they do have a little bit. How long should this man be a snare unto us? Read it, son. Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet the, that Egypt is destroyed? Don't you look, look around. The whole land of Egypt except Goshen is destroyed. Let the people go. All they want to do is go do Passover. Yeah. And let them, then they can come on back to work. Pharaoh going to mess it up to where the children of the area ain't going to never have to come back to work for him. Never. He ain't going to never have to come back to work for him. They going to own, they gonna own it. Read it. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, yeah, We. You, listen here, hold on. Are you stupid, man? Brother Hefner, you think I'm going to leave my son and daughter back here and I'm just going to go to church without them? Are you stupid? Ask him, who going to go? Read Acts, ask, ask, what question? What verse Oh, uh, nah. And verse Moses said, uh, uh, you said That's it. do the question again? Yeah, do it again. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young, our and, young with, and with our old, uh -huh. with our sons, our son. and with our daughters, uh -huh. with our flocks. And then I'm taking my sheep and animals with me. I'm not leaving them back here. Read on, son. And with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. All right. And he said unto them, let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go and your little ones. Look to it, for evil is before you. <laughs> no, it ain't, Pharaoh. Evil is before you. Read on. Verse 12. Verse 12 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand, excuse me, over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, <laughs> even all that the hell had left. God is mad at them. Read on. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. Now and listen, and when you read, read this, and you go back and you, when God first dealt with Moses, it was about this rod. And this is why Moses told him, God told him in chapter 15, when he was crying out to him, I think it was 15, when he was at the Red Sea, he asked Moses, Moses, why are you crying out to me? You got everything that you need. You done took that rod and did everything else. I thought about that when restudying this this morning. Read it. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt. How much they go over, son? All the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they before they there. Before them there were no such locusts as they. Hmm. Neither after them shall be oh, such. that was bad. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, Lord and Lord. all the fruit of the trees which hmm. the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the hmm. field through all the land of Egypt. Some locusts were hungry. Read on. And, and listen, then, uh, let me say this sadly. Let me throw this in. You see these plagues here? This is the way this thing going to come down to an end. When them trumpet get the sound in the end, it, mm -hmm. this is just symbolic to how this thing going to come down to an end. God has showed all of this stuff to one of Read it, Charlie. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God. <laughs> oh, Pharaoh, you just telling a story. You said that the last time. You have, but you ain't truly repentant. 
Read it. And against you. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my <laughs> sin only this once. And, and he had that in there with Moses. Against you too, Moses. And, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. Take away from me this death only. It's going to be, you ain't saw it yet. Read it. He and went the, on. And the Lord turned a mighty strong wind. And the Lord turned <laughs> a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. And now, guess who else going to be cast into the Red Sea after a while? Read on. He's going to get to see his locusts after a while again. <laughs> there Read remained it. not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. That's pretty rough there. It was so black to where they could feel it. It was just scary. And it was spooky feeling. That's pretty, that's pretty scary there. Read, that's where she be. Got a light lit all up, just light sprung all through. I went out through there the other night, and I walked around there, more lights out there in the house than what the street light was doing. I don't like it dark like that. I can feel it. I don't She got her light. I mean, when they sprung all the way around. <laughs> all right, Mark Red. Verse. 22, and Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days. How they, long was it, Marquette? Three days. What are you going, what's it going to take, Pharaoh? Read it. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. Mm -hmm. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. What you say, Marquette? All the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. Hmm. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, sir, the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. <laughs> let uh, your little ones also go with you. <laughs> leave, leave your animal back. You are going to take the children. That's what you wanted a while ago. Let's see what he's going to tell And me. Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices I, and burnt offerings. I'll tell you what. Not only will I take my animal, I'm not going to even kill my animal for the sacrifice. Because we got to kill a Passover lamb. You give me one of your animals. Now, if Moses ain't talking mean and bad to Pharaoh, and at first he didn't even want to say nothing, told God he didn't want to talk. This man done got bold in the word of God here. Read it, brother. Verse 25 said, And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go. With us, there shall not an hoof be left behind. <laughs> that horseshoe that mama them put, they, well, not mama, y'all didn't do that. That horseshoe they put behind that door, she said, we're not going to leave not one horseshoe behind. All of our animals going. Read it. For thereof must God, and we know not with, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord. We're going down there, and we don't know how many animals we're going to have to sacrifice and kill. Read on. Until we come hither. Mm -hmm. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Read it. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me. Take heed to thyself. What Pharaoh said? Get thee from me. Get Take out heed of here. to thyself. And do what you said. Read on. See my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, <laughs> thou shalt die. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Pharaoh told the preacher to get out of here, and you next time, if I ever see your face again, you going to die. If I'd have been molded, I'd have said yes and amen. Yes and amen. Because, buddy, that coming. Next time I see you see my face in a few days, you going to die. And you ain't going to have to pay nothing for your burial. <laughs> the sea have got you covered. I, you, some of these people are ignorant, man. You just got to talk to them according to the scripture. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 29. 29 said. And Moses said, thou hast spoken well. You spoken well about I that. I will man. see thy face again no more. <laughs> no more. Let's go on into chapter 10, 11. Where we at? Chapter 11 and verse 1. Let's finish this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh. What, what you say, Father? Yet will I bring one plague God more. God said, I got one more to get his attention, Abigail. Just one more, and this one here is going to get his attention. He ain't paid any attention to, that, to the nine. But this one here is going to touch his heart. You remember when God told, told him back there in chapter, chapter uh, 4? Israel is my son, mm -hmm. even my firstborn. See, Moses didn't tell him that because Moses was scared to it probably. But tell him, I'm going to kill your son, even your firstborn. Let's look at it. 11 and 1. Yeah, well, it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more unto Pharaoh, 
and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence to altogether. He going to throw you out there. Read on. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor. Listen, he going back to chapter 3 when God told him all of this stuff. Ask for them silver, them gold. Get the Nike tennis shoe. Y'all been had them sandals on all for all them years. Get whatever you guys want because they ain't going to need it. Especially the men. I'm going to give them a barrier party, my policy that they ain't got to pay for. Read, just get whatever you want from them. Read on. Speak now in their ears. I'm sorry, <clears throat> verse 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt and in the sight of Pharaoh's servant and in the sight of the people. And <clears throat> Moses said, thus said the Lord, about midnight. What you said, Moses? About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the meal, mm -hmm. and all the firstborn of the beast. And there shall be a great cry throughout mm. all the land of Egypt. Lord have mercy. Such as there was none like it. How many going to be killed? Read on. Nor shall it be like any anymore. And listen to what God says about you. But against any of the children of against Israel, against any of the children of Israel, shall not a dog move his tongue. Can't nobody speak nothing against you. Hallelujah. And see, this is what I take pride in. Yeah. Yeah. Can't nobody, if they got any sense, Brother Hefner, they wouldn't say nothing negative against you. You are the son of the Most High God. Go back there, Deuteronomy 7 and 15 and get it for me. Now, we were talking about these diseases that he wouldn't put. And listen here, God said, if it takes a fool to talk about you. Even a dog can't wag his tongue. That's what he called the Egyptian dogs. They, they ain't going to be able to say one negative word against you. Listen to this. Let me show you how this thing works. And Deuteronomy the, 7 and 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Lay it up on those people that hate you and talk against you. That's why I say it takes people need understanding. I was looking at this message this morning. I taught, I am a son of the Most High God. Do you know who I am? Let's look at it, son. Chapter 12 and verse number 1. See, the, the all this. Seven. Uh, verse 7. Yeah, finish verse 7. That ye may know how the Lord had, that ye may know how that the Lord that put a difference between the Egyptians <laughs> and Israel. How many times do we have to tell you that? God loves you so much, you make a difference between here and, and other children. Verse number 12 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the let me, land let me of Egypt. say this to you, and especially to our viewers. Listen, don't, don't get mad about this. You're supposed to be a son and a daughter of the Most High. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters. Yes, yes. Now, if you're not brothers and sisters of God, yeah, I, if I were you, I would be just like Pharaoh. I would be mad. If you didn't, if you didn't know you were the son or daughter of the Most High, I would be just like Pharaoh. I would be mad too. It don't have to be that way. I'm, I'm, I want to help you, Verse. not make you mad. <laughs> Verse 12. <laughs> For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Uh -huh. And the blood shall be to you for a token. Do it upon, again. My and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. This is what I'm going to come back next Sabbath and talk about. I got to put the blood on you. I got to put you under the blood covenant. For this very reason here, saints, the blood should be upon you for a token or for a sign, a sign, a, a sign, identify person, place, or things. So the blood has got to be on you. Remember that. Signs identify. When the angels come through and when they see the sign, when they see the token of the covenant. What verse are you reading at? This is middle of 13. Friendship. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. He's going to do it. But I when he that. see the blood, this is why you got to come under this Passover saint. This is why it's so important. And you got people. Now, and I said that this is why I said what I said about Easter. What did Easter tell you you had to do last week? Hot eggs. What you say, Marquette? Hot eggs. Hot eggs. Did anybody talk about a blood covenant to where it protects you and your whole household? Say, can't nothing happen to you? Can't nothing happen to your smoking children? We, what we smoking children? Partying children? They're covered under the blood. 
until they, and you pray that they come back in and pray that you train them up in something so that when they get older, they don't depart. If they have, depart prodigal son to where they can still come back home. This is the importance of the blood, right? This is it, saints. You can help your whole household. Because some of that other stuff, Dr. Moore, we was in the back. She told me how to drink. She wanted me to teach a message on, she didn't want me to title it the way that I title it. Mercy, mine is the covenant over mercy all the time. But she wanted me to teach a message, but not say it that way. But listen, this blood covenant, saints, God have got to hold up to end his end of the bargain. It's a blood covenant. The only way that he could come out from under it, somebody got to die to break it. And he's, amen, Ella Duncan. And he's not dying anymore. And I don't have no intent of it either. Read that verse you just read. What verse was it? That was verse, uh, was it 13? 13. Yeah, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Come on down to verse, verse 28. I'm going to talk about this next week. This is where I'm going to pick up our lesson next Sabbath. Verse 28. And the certain, and the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord has commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And it came to pass that at midnight hmm. the Lord smote all the firstborn verse, in verse the land. Verse 28. And it Come on, and the it. children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And it came to pass that at midnight that the Lord smote all at the midnight? first. At midnight? The Lord smote all. At midnight. Who did this, my The friend? Lord. He, he allowed it to be done. Who did he send in? He sent, he sent an evil angel of destruction. The destroyer. Whether it was Satan or one of his helpers, God sent this. He told, he told Pharaoh early, I love these people. And if you don't leave them alone, I'm going to kill your son, even your firstborn. Look at it, saints. Finish the text. Verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Mm. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. Mm. That was a great cry. What you say, son? That was a great cry Man. in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Lord have mercy. Now, other week when we got to, we, we called prayer and began to come against the enemy, we had a death that we knew of early that morning, and then one last night, the Hampton family, whom we're so sorry to hear about, but we began to pray and come against Satan. Only two we heard of that day, and it, it saddened our heart, especially the young man, they, well, both of them, Brother Mark Mitchell and, and uh, Keyshawn, it saddened our heart to hear that. So we come against the enemy. We, we command that he stop, get away from it. We did all of this stuff. But how do you think these, it was two, mama, in this Bennett County that we knew of. How do you think those people down in Egypt feel? It was not a house where it wasn't one dead at. And these were old people died. These were their firstborns. Young children, may have been my age or young. I don't know how old Pharaoh was. How do you think it? How do you think those people feel? So when you say it was a great cry, such as never, oh man, I don't even want to imagine it. Read where you at, where you at? Verse 31. Mm -hmm. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and <laughs> said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, <laughs> both ye and the children of Israel, and go and serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone and bless me also. You sure you want it, Pharaoh? You sure? You, the one that you told me earlier, that, who is the Lord that you should obey him? Now you said, be gone, and please ask him to bless us also. What verse is that? That was verse 32. Mm -hmm. Come on down verse to verse 42. number 42. It is a night to be much a serve unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land, from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Saints, you're supposed to be here for this night. For this night to be a night of much, a memorial, a night to be much a serve. Bring all your children. Bring everybody out. This is totally different from Easter. 
This happens at night at the sitting of the sun, which goes into the 15th day, the f uh, first day of unleavened bread. From that day, we have a command to eat unleavened bread for seven days. When they left out of there that night, you remember he told them about all that silver and gold that y'all were going to get? They got it. Anybody see that in there in that, cha in that 12th chapter? Uh, no, I think that's in uh, 13, I think. They got it. Oh, they got it. We're going to look at it. I'm going to give it to you uh, here in a little bit. But they got all of that stuff there that night. You know, Mama, you remember, huh? Back up 35. You remember how we used to, they, we used to be poor. We used, Mama and them used to make bread. They couldn't afford that roller. You know what they made bread out of? That tin can. So won't be no more of that breaking bread out of tin can. Y'all could get them people rollers and all of that stuff. Want to be no more sewing and picking your hand with that needle and study sticking your hand? Get, those, get that sewing machine from them because they don't need it no way. They don't need them throwing clothes for their husband. They husband did. They finna be drowning in the Red Sea. Ah, this is the way it is. Let me close this with you where I started at. Go back to 5 and 6. 5 and 6. And then, we're going to read that 30, whatever verse it was. <laughs> 35. 35. It's 12 and uh, 35. Exodus 12 and 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they bought of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold, raiment, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. <laughs> he got all of that stuff. Get them children, them little knocking shoes and everything. Look barefoot running around there barefooted. You remember how it used to be? Oh, everybody that's my age done ran around barefooted before. Not no more. We got shoes and socks. <laughs> Happy day to hear again. Chapter 5, verse 5 and verse 6, and then we close them with our, but come on, brother. Come on. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. This lamb represents Christ. This is Passover. Read it. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in Who the evening. Who killed Christ, Marquette? Israel did. The whole assembly of people. Go back to our foundation scripture where we started with, and we'll give it up. Appreciate it. First Corinthians 5 and verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's what we're going for, saints. Saints, whether you know it or not, I beg of you all. I read all of these. I read from chapter 3 all the way to chapter 12 this morning. You can easily read it. It's not a long reading. It's good reading. It's good humor in it. And then it's stuff to make you want to cry because of the sadness that the people still won't get together. So... Uh, look into it. Make sure that you read it and look into these things. Uh, Brother Jalen, God bless you, young man. We miss you, miss you, miss you. Looking forward to see, seeing you. Sister Shanita, uh, Sister Mary, God bless you all. Miss you all. Sister Sarah Israel, our sister, God bless you. Sister Lakeisha, bless you. Miss Thompson, bless you. Sister Payne, bless you. To my Aunt Sherry, God bless you. Uh, uh, Uncle Steve, bless you all. Miss Emma, bless you. Mother Charletta, bless you. Tylon, I hope I did that right. God bless you. Uh, Sister Sharon Connor, bless you. Sister Jimerson, God bless you. We miss you all today. My Aunt Lottie, God bless you. We miss you. Brother R.C., God bless you. My brother Yolinda Hampton, God bless you. And Fast Be Best Bethel, how to do it? Bethel, God bless you. And to all others that's viewing us, truly we thank God for you. Sister Donette Nickerberry, to all of my preacher brothers and friends, we bless God for all of you all that's viewing us. Listen, this Passover is so important. For any that want information on it, any that want teaching on it, we're obligated to come. We have to come into your house. You can meet us here. We want to give you skill and understanding on this. It's our job to help you. Um, and and, and don't, don't criticize me for the way I feel about pagan holidays. I feel that way because I see what it's doing to the people. Easter has nothing at all to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And that's why I say about it. 
And I feel sorry for those that look into that. Um, Christ has given us the Passover. And it's all the way through the New Testament. The big, and it ends with it. So, you know, I have nothing for Passover. And I'm not one to condemn what other people are doing. I do feel sorry for people when all of these things are happening and don't nobody know what to do. But things are happening because we, the people, have gotten away from what God commanded them to do. LSM taught a message a moment ago talking about this everlasting gospel, the true gospel. It's not being taught, saints. Because if it's being taught, you will see a change in the communities. You'll see a change in the world. If it was, but that a Duncan said there's power with it. The Holy Spirit comes with it and it aids and it do what they're supposed to do. So we bless God for you. Bible study group of Israel, if you would stand to your feet, the brethren are going to speak uh, the blessings over you. Our elder brother, Brother Wayne, is going to come after where with his closing remarks and prayer, speaking other blessings over you, and then we're going to let you go for the Sabbath. Bless you. Nehemiah 13, then continued I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tie of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. Hallelujah. Malachi 3, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have ye robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring in all the tithes into, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delight of land, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Hallelujah. Number six, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Hallelujah. We bless God for his word. We're grateful and we're thankful for him speaking through Brother Mark. And Brother Mark said the importance of keeping the feast, the Passover. He says very important that we do it. And then even in the, the word of God, uh, it said three times that the men, the, the men children shall appear before the Lord. The feast of unleavened bread, the feast of harvest, the feast of ingathering. And not only that, he said, if you do these things, he said, he promised blessing. He said, I cast out nations from before you. I would enlarge your border. No man should desire your land. Nobody will be able to take anything from you. You will be blessed. He promised blessing in these times. That's why Brother Mark says it's very important. He didn't say that it comes any other times. But he says very important that we do that, these things, at the appointed season that God have appointed the time, the set time to do them. It's very important that we do them. Again, we thank uh, Elder Sam. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Lord speaking through you and blessing you and keeping you. And we thank him for all our brothers. Brother Mark teaching the word, Father, about the Passover. And uh, again, we just bless him. And we thank him again for all the men here, all the mothers, and all that makes up this congregation, even those who are watching and looking into God's word. We pray that his blessings be, uh, be upon you forever, that he keep you and keep you in this way. Keep your mind stayed up on him, for that he is your only hope. And at this time, we will bow for prayer. 
Closing prayer, Father, we come again thanking you, thanking you for keeping us and watching over us this day, for you speaking to us, Father, for us digesting that word, Father, that it come back up. Father, that we go share your word this week, that we be a help to the people, that we, we, we help them, we love them, we care for them. We do all the things that you have told us to do. We teach your word about the Passover in this season, the things that you told us to talk about. Even what LSM said, we, everybody's teaching on everything else, but they not. It's just you told us to preach this same gospel. That Christ preached. And we, we're grateful and we are thankful for all that you're doing. So, Father, we speak this day that you would continue to watch over us, that you would continue to keep us. Father, keep your arm of protection around us. Bless us wherever we go, Father. That we ask that you speak through us. We ask that you direct our paths, Father. We ask that you keep us at, a, at the apple of your eye. We ask you that, Father, that you would just keep your arm of protection around us. Protect our homes our, all around, every, our business, our children. Whatever we put our hands to do, Father, we ask you to bless. We ask you to keep us, Father, and bless us, Father. We thank you for the food that has been prepared for our body, Father. And as we go again, Father, as we leave this place, we ask that you, Father, that we leave, just speak through us. Keep us, watch over us, protect us, guide us, Father, and we, we will stay in this way Father, never cast your spirit from us. Keep your spirit upon us, Father. And we just thank you and we bless you, Father. We thank you for the little ones that's here, Father, for we know that they are the future, that they will soon be up here doing what we're doing. We're asking you to continue to watch over them, to continue to keep them, continue to bless. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.